Okay, hey YouTube, it's time for me to record a podcast. I realized though, I forgot that you guys don't actually get the benefit of hearing my real intro and outro that is on my podcast that if you listen like to um, through Apple or Spotify, you'll hear my music, but it's kind of just a dead intro and outro on here because you guys don't hear the beginning part, but it's a little fancy. Um, check it out if you want to at some point. Um, it's kind of... Um, nice to hear my music and it sounds good as it kind of fades in and fades out. I think I like the way it sounds through Apple and Spotify. But anyways, here we go. I got to hit record here. Welcome back to the Don't Stop Me Now podcast, where being negative can be a good thing and being positive can turn the world against you. Hello, I am your host, Miss Jennifer Lee Vaughn, and this is episode 87. 87. I can't believe it. We're getting close to 100 year, 100 years, 100 here. Um, I started this in, I think it was like October of 2020. So I'm coming up on three years. I mean, Technically, if I was doing this as much as I should have, I would have hit 100 a while ago. But um, there was some times where I went two or three months and didn't do another podcast just because I wasn't sure anybody was even listening. But I do have a lot of people who chime in and tell me that they're waiting for the next one, including my daughter, Ryan. I told her I was going to record one yesterday. Hi, Ryan. And um, she asked me today if I had, and I didn't, and I felt like I disappointed her. So I will... Um, I'm making it up to her by doing it now. And I also um, talked about it on my Instagram story so that I would push myself to do it because um, <clears throat> you have to be kind of on when you do this. You can't just sit and relax. It's not like, you know, just chilling on your phone and scrolling through Instagram and TikTok. You actually have to like think. And so um, it does take a little preparation. So <laughs> um, I was like just being kind of lazy. It's my uh, week off at the moment. Uh, school ended last Friday, which was good, and it's nice. I'm getting a week off. I do go to a little meeting tomorrow because the next week I start summer school for a, a, a month, um, and it'll be really easy. It's just like morning to afternoon, like short afternoon, like before noon. I'm done at like 11.30 or 11.45 or something, so it's really nice. Um, but uh, the end of my week last week consisted of three of the kids that were in my mod to severe class it's like a life skills class they were third through sixth grade three of them were moving on to new schools because they were graduating they were going into sixth grade so even though our program goes up to sixth grade some of the parents want them to move on and go do junior high life skills you know at another school starting because some of the junior high started sixth grade so we did have three of them graduate and it was really really sweet and I got to be their teacher um that sat there was only two other sixth grade teachers at this school and I was um sitting in the coveted seats up at the front with the stage and they actually said my name to the crowd I'm such a ham I freaking love that shit I got to stand up and everybody clapped for me <clears throat> although I didn't get the applause the other two te teachers got because I have only been there for two months but and I was only you know I was only there for three students so anyways but it was still fun and it was just a nice way to end the time with them and um it it brought me back to my um why did I write that I had five graduates? No, I only had three. Um, oh, somebody wrote me a note because I got so many teacher gifts and notes from the staff and everything. Anyways, one of the, um, she's actually the aunt to one of the boys that would come in and he has Down syndrome. And um, in her note, it said, it takes a big heart to teach little minds. And I loved that so much. I'm like, I, I'm keeping that note forever because it wasn't like a derogatory thing to say. It's the truth. You know, their, their minds think differently and it was just a sweet way of putting it. And, um, it made me feel really good. And I love special ed. I just, I love it. The kids are, I mean, they have their moments just like any kids, but they're sweet. I, I don't know. It's just a really, it's a really fun way to do school and to teach. It's so different from general ed. So I really enjoyed my time there and I enjoyed working with the three ladies that I work with too. And now we're all off to do summer school and I will be with special ed during summer school as well. It's going to be 18 plus. It's like last year I'm doing, um, it's called post-secondary and it's the kids that are doing life skills 
Um, I had many of them last year, so it's just going to be like a reunion. Even the women I'm working with or the aides are going to be the same, so it'll be a good time. Um, but it reminded me of when I graduated from the eighth grade. And um, of course, I'm tall and my last name starts with V, so I always end up sitting in the last row regardless if it's height or last name, I'm always last. And um, we were sitting boy, girl, boy, girl, you know, everybody sat that way. And I remember there was three rows. This was Central Junior High in San Carlos, California. It was 1983, I believe. And um, yeah, 83, does that make sense? I'm pretty sure. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. But um, yeah, I was 12 at the time, turning 13 in the summer, I think. Maybe it was 84. Christ, I can't remember. But anyways, so we have folding chairs that we're sitting on. And um, we had practiced, as you do, for graduation several times. We all had it down. There's a moment where everybody's standing when we first get to our seats. And then somebody says, everybody sit, right? And you all sit at the same time. So I'm standing there waiting for that moment where they tell us to all sit. And I'm wearing a sundress with a little coat, short sleeve coat. It's very 80s. My little sundress had light pastel colors all through it, pinks and yellows and blues. I don't know if I look like a baby, but whatever. I liked it. And um, anyways, and I was not, like I said, I was not popular in junior high at all. Um, I've said that many times before. I had just a small group of girlfriends, like, you know three, four, about that. I, of course, I wasn't sitting near any of them because um, it was by last name and um, so I wasn't sitting near them. So I had two boys on either side of me. I do remember one of them was, I'm calling you out, Clayton Eichler. I know he was on one side of me. I don't remember who the other one was. I think I do. I feel like I see him in my head, but I don't know his name. Anyways, when they go to say sit, I sat and all of a sudden I realized I my feet like my butt had hit the ground. My entire backside had been scratched up by the chair and um, my dress was in my face. So those boys, those two boys on either side of me, while we were standing there waiting to sit, they had put my chair up. So my chair wasn't, there was nothing to sit on. So I had no clue that that had happened and all the noise and everything, they did it and, um, I'll never forget that moment because I had to like quickly get up and fix my chair and can't tell anybody what just happened. And I'm not sure that anybody in the audience even saw it because we were in the top row and my back was bleeding. <laughs> so I couldn't do anything about it. I mean, I don't remember talking about it later. Obviously, I must have told my mom and everything. Um, but it was, <clears throat> that's the one moment I really have from my eighth grade graduation is that prank that was pulled on me. That was just really, really mean. So, um, I know that Clayton would feel bad if I even was, <laughs> was saying this now, cause I know he's a nice person, but, um, I'm pretty sure it was him. God, if it wasn't, I'm going to feel really bad, but I'm pretty sure it was him. We're on Facebook together, but I don't think he listens to this podcast. So anyways, that was, yeah, that was that. Um, I went to, oh, before I forget, somebody had said, please explain the t-shirt. So, um, don't be so, and this is the, chemical compound for it's the two elements sodium and chloride everybody should know that come on you guys it's salt so that's the chemical compound for salt don't be so salty that is what that shirt means and I I just love that shirt I really really love the periodic table I don't know if it's the Virgo in me but I really just love how perfect it is and how all the different numbers work out and I don't I just mm, there's something very satisfying about the periodic table I really just always loved it and I'm um, not really all that great with math but I did like chemistry just for that part of it um, this is from and people on only people on YouTube can see this but this is something I made in my special ed class we all made our own cloud and rainbows and this is what they called me in school they called me Miss Jen so I got to bring that home because we cleaned up the classroom so figured I'd have that there uh, to represent the end of school. Okay, and then before I forget, I also want to say that my daughter, um, Ryan, who went to the Duran Duran concert with me, I'll talk about that in a second, um, Mother's Day had happened and she gave me this beautiful card. She gives me cards, you know, that are like, like that, but in the inside, she's decorating them. And this is all in her own handwriting. And I just wanted to read what she said. I have the most amazing kids and um, they are just they're my world and 
I just think um, Ryan writes so beautifully and I wanted to share what she said. She says, why my mom is the best. Always having our, I gotta hold it back a little bit. Always having our backs. Best podcaster out there. <laughs> I told you she was a fan. Um, treats her little landmark family. That's the elementary school that I work at with so much respect and love can cook a mean tuna noodle casserole. <laughs> that is actually funny. It's very easy to make. Uh, does not, I, sorry, I'm like the lighting in here is not good. Does not, oh, kill little bugs in the house. Nope. I never do. Loves her kids and kitties more than anything else. You're absolutely right. So many crazy life stories. I could never get tired of hearing. It's so crazy thinking that you eventually you're going to have these kids that are going to be your audience and they actually want to hear these things about your life, which is really, it's just, you know, life is amazing. Um, uh, finds supports my seasonal watermelon obsession <laughs> every time I go to the store. Ryan says, can you get a watermelon? She doesn't live in the house anymore, but if she hears I'm going to the store, she will still say, can you get me a watermelon? She loves, she'll eat like the whole watermelon. I don't know if she does it in one sitting, but she's always been obsessed with watermelon. Um, I can't put into words, she says, dear mom, I can't put into words how lucky Joey Owen and I are to have you um, as our mom. No one could ever give us the amount of love and support that you have for us three. Thank you for always being my number one supporter, no matter the situation. I love you. Happy Mother's Day. Love, Ryan. I love you, Ryan. Thank you so much for this. And you know, I keep all of your cards, so that just means a lot to me. Um, yeah, we don't need flowers and money or anything like that. We don't, I mean, I, I love a little chocolate, but things like that mean so much. Those kind of cards mean so much. And, um, I, yeah, I keep them all. I love them. Um, yeah, so Ryan went to Duran Duran with me, and that was, I had recorded my last podcast right before we were leaving for the show, so, oh my gosh, we stopped to get fa, which is, I, I want to call it pho so badly, and I usually do, and I always get corrected, it's fa, the noodles, so we found a place before we went to Duran Duran over in San Jose, on Trimble Road, if anybody knows that that area, and um, there's a lot of Vietnamese restaurants over there. So we go and we find a place, and I, I walk in, and the lady, obviously, they speak, they're completely authentic. They don't speak great English. She shows me the menu. I'm pointing to what I want. I decide I want some shrimp um, spring rolls. One order came with four, so I'm like, okay, one order, and cut cost there, right? And then I want to get two... Uh, and I wasn't even that hungry, honestly, but it, Ryan was going to get the chicken, you know, noodle soup, so to speak. And I just said, make it two. And then Ryan wanted a boba. So, um, I'm waiting for them to wrap it all up because we're going to eat it in the car. Ryan did not want to eat in the restaurant. And you know, when you get the soup, there's a lot of different things that go with it. There's the sprouts, there's the, well, the chicken, there's cilantro, um, there's the sauces, there's the broth, everything's separate. Um, so it is a bit to like wrap up each separate thing. It's, it's some work to make it a to-go order. Um, but regardless of that, the bill comes and I'm thinking, I mean, I know the prices have gone up on everything, but I was so shocked. This was literally a lot of broth, a little bit of chicken, some rice noodles, some sprouts, some cilantro. Um, I don't even know what I'm missing here. And then some spring rolls and a boba. $54. I almost died. And I didn't want to be rude because I was like, are you, is that the right order? And here's the other thing on the menu, there's no prices. I mean, there was no numbers. If there was, they were not in English. So I didn't, I was just randomly guessing. I had no, I just, I assumed it was going to be around 30. I don't know. I was so blown away by $54. I was like, oh my God. So we, I take it out to the car and I say to Ryan, that was $54. Like we could have had, well, I don't know. We could have had a burrito each and spent 30 at, at Chipotle. Honestly, that's what it cost to have burritos there now, two of them. Um, but you know, I was like, well, originally my plan was to go to spaghetti factory. So I'm like, it would have been like around 50 something anyway. So it's like, whatever. I mean, you only live once, but like, it just felt like a lot of money. And when you see all this broth, so I, there's no good way to do this in your driver's seat with the steering wheel. And even if you back the seat up, so I'm trying to hold the broth, but it's in a plastic container. It's not in styrofoam. So the heat's going right through and this is piping hot broth. I can't take it. I can barely hold it for like longer than 10 seconds. It's burning the 
fuck out of my hand. So I'm like, how am I going to add? Because I'm hungry. I mean, I ate the spring rolls. I ate two of them. And I thought, I just want some of this soup. So I'm trying to like figure out how I'm going to just put some of the chicken in there and some of the noodles. And just I just want to scoop some noodles up into my mouth, you know, and get just some of it because we needed to go. I can't figure anything out. Nothing's working in the driver's seat. And like, what am I going to do? And it's windy out. So I end up like squatting. I open my car door. I squat in the parking lot between my car door and my open car. I mean, I looked ridiculous, but I can squat pretty far down. You know how like in, in like Asia, they sit like that all the time. I can sit like that too. I can sit really squatted. No problem. Like my whole body in between my knees, my knees can be like above my, my body actually. So I'm, I'm bending over. Also the hair is falling forward. I'm trying to hold my hair with one hand and use the chopsticks with the other. Anyways, Ryan got some hilarious photos of me. Those were not planned. I was literally struggling big time just to get a little bit of soup and noodles in my mouth without eating my hair and having it pour on my lap and me have like third degree burns on my crotch. So that was fun. Um, so then I sealed it all up and we headed over to Duran Duran. And really all I have to say about Duran Duran is we had great seats. I honestly forgot where I had the seats. I did not remember at all. I thought that I might have the, I never really care that much about seats because the screens are always so great at these concerts that I, and these guys are old and I don't really care about seeing them that well. Um, I just want to hear them. But like these screens are usually so big and good that you can have a pretty good seat from wherever you are. So I thought I had seats up higher. We were in row six in the first section. I mean, we were almost on the ground. I couldn't believe it. And we were like two sections away from the stage. We were really close to the stage, uh, way closer than I realized at all until we sat down. We were like, holy shit. She's like, these are really good seats, mom. We're like, I know. So um, there was Sheik. Uh, I can't remember the guy's name. He's a famous like writer composer he's got dreads his name is chic and his, I, I can't think of his name Lonnie mm, I'm close I know I should have I didn't even plan on talking about him anyways th they did some great covers because he's written songs for David Bowie and like Madonna and so he was able to play some of those they did like um China Girl and um, Modern Love and um, Girls Just Want to Have Fun and stuff so that was really fun then they did like Le Freak de Chic. Freak out. You know that song. That's his song too. Niles Davis. There we go. It came to me. Um, so, you know, and he always kind of talks. About, they opened for Duran Duran when I saw them like a few years ago. And they, um, I don't know, Niles Davis just kind of, it, it's weird. It's almost like he's patting himself on the back for his, his like life's work, which, I, but I kind of get it because maybe people don't really get who he is and why he's playing those covers because he wrote them. So he's allowed to play them. So he kind of like tells the audience and then they show a clip of him like winning Grammys and stuff, which I thought is a little over the top, but whatever. Anyway, so he, they were fun. And then they had another band, Bastille. I can't even tell you the name of the song, but it's got a lot of drumming in it and you probably all know it. It's, it's from, I don't know, less than 10 years ago, but they were great. Lead singer was really good looking. And then Duran Duran comes out and they were great. I do love Duran Duran. I have seen them one time before live at the Greek theater in Berkeley, um, probably like seven years ago. And, um, what astounds me more than anything about them is their ages. They are, um, Simon and John, John, everyone loves John Taylor. Simon's 64. He's 60 fucking four. And he sounds great. Simon's got such a distinct voice. You know, he's, it's a little whiny, but it's that it's Simon's voice. You know, he still sounds like he did when he was 25. Um, John Taylor, um, you know, he's still doing the same thing with his hair a little bit, not as much as he did in the, like the late eighties, nineties. But uh, uh, the one thing that I do love about them is that they're both six two. <laughs> Meow. I was like, I looked all this stuff up while I was watching the show. Some songs came up that I just didn't know at all because they they play some of their newer music. Um, and you know what's funny is they save Save a Prayer for the second to the last song. Rio was the last song. Um, and Save a Prayer, of course, they, everyone's holding their phones with the lights, which I'm surprised everybody's able to do because it's literally the last song, almost the last song of the night. And I hardly have any battery at that point on my phone. So I cannot use my light to be like going through the whole song and holding it up. I don't know how everybody's able to do that, but I like always at concerts by close to the last song. I'm on my, my phone's usually almost done. But anyways, um, so Save a Prayer was phenomenal in concert. I don't know what it is about that group experience with the music. And it just, as soon as it cuts into the, 
Um, do, 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 As soon as it cuts into that part, and I had it on my Instagram story, I just get chills thinking about it. It was so good, but um, I don't like want to ever hear it ever in my off my phone. Like I could care less about hearing "Save a Prayer" ever again in my life on the on my phone, you know, or on the radio. I, I would turn the channel if it came on, honestly. And I don't really listen to FM radio anymore, but it's not a favorite song of mine. But I really, really loved it live. There, there is that about live music. Some stuff you can appreciate just totally differently um, when it's live. And he sounded great singing that. And um, Rio was last uh, "Hungry by the Wolf." Hungry by the Wolf, yeah, um, was the second song. I really expected that to be close to the end, but I think they did the same similar lineup when I saw them seven years ago. I do recall that Hungry Like the Wolf was um, was one of the um, beginning songs, which kind of you're almost shitting your pants because you can't believe like they're playing that right off the bat. It's like, oh my God, you're playing a gigantic hit. I always love the reflex I loved that song when it came out. I know it's a little quirky, but I loved that song. I loved the video when it was playing on MTV. Oh, and then they did, I think during the reflex, they they show a bunch of, like along the screens above, they're doing a bunch of um, pictures from back then and showing video footage from the 80s and 90s when they were, you know, very popular pictures that you've seen in the magazines and stuff. And it just it makes everybody, it's so nostalgic. You know, it's just really exciting because I, you know, I lived that, um, oh, I get all emotional when I think about it, but I lived, that was my, you know, it was a, it was forming my teenage years and it was a big part of my, um, the music that I listened to. So it's, it's just amazing that these bands come around again and, you know, um, bring those memories back to us that were so vivid back then that honestly don't feel that long ago. But anyways, love Duran Duran. Love you guys. I don't know that I'd see them again, but I, I did love them. So, okay. Um, Let's see. I wanted to mention, God, I have like crap in my throat. I don't want to like clear my throat, but I'm going to hold on. Oh, that's so gross, but it was like not going away. I'm going to have a sip of my wine. Sorry, that was disgusting. Mm. I've got two buck chuck here. This is which stands for um, two buck chuck is Trader Joe's um, really cheap wine. It's Charles Shaw, but you get it two buck chuck. For those that don't know about Trader Joe's, it's a little niche grocery store here in Cal. I think they're only, maybe they're on the East Coast. Maybe they started there. Who even knows? But uh, we love our Trader Joe's. They have kind of their own line of food and um, and things are cheap. But, you know, you don't, the, quanti the quantity is small. <laughs> That's why it's cheap. Anyways, I love their wine. I'm not picky about wine and I do love their Merlot. It um, goes down smooth. So anyways, um, I thought I cleared that thing up, but I didn't. I am getting over a cold. I had uh, an ear infection. Uh, I forgot to mention that I had an ear infection. I still do, but it's much better. Um, started on, I don't know, it was like Saturday. I felt the pressure and I had stayed home from my after school program on that Thursday before the end of school because I was so done when I was done with my day job. I went home and then I slept for two hours. I'm like, definitely something was brewing in my body. And then I went um, to uh, I, the Saturday, my ears started getting plugged up. And then by Saturday, it was hurting or Sunday, it was hurting. And then I thought, well, mm, I'll take some of the antibiotics that I have for bladder infections like so stupid but I thought I'll take my macro bit and see if that helps my ear through the night if it doesn't I'm gonna get my blood drawn anyways on Monday today is Wednesday I'm gonna get my blood drawn on Monday and if it's not gone I will just put myself in and get an appointment for my ear so I go wait I, the Saturday night into Sunday I'm having I'm waking up with throbbing ear pain so I have to go down and take Advil to help me just get some you know be able to like get the throbbing to stop and if you've had your ear infections most people have you know that it's so painful it's like sharp piercing ear pain it's always in my right ear i've always had trouble with my right ear and it's like you know it just hurts and um and i kept like thinking oh and my somebody i work with was telling me that she had an ear infection like two weeks ago she thought she went to the doctor and they said it was not an ear infection they gave her nothing for it and i'm thinking okay maybe i'm just being a big baby maybe this is not an ear infection because i probably have the same cold that she has so I, again, I go through this whole thing thinking, even though I had the pain from Saturday into Sunday, I'm going to wait till Monday 
So I wait till Monday and that night from Sunday to Monday was again, excruciating. I had to get up in the middle of the night, take Advil, um, and try to sleep. My ear, you know, I was like almost going to go get the hot water bottle. My mom used to give me that when I was a kid and put that on your ear. I don't really know why that helps the heat. I don't even know that it does help, but I did finally go back to sleep. I think it was more so the ibuprofen. So, um, I go to the appointment after I got my blood drawn and what a shit show that was. The place where I had my blood drawn is my doctor's office, which is a county office. They couldn't see me unless somebody didn't come in for an appointment. So they put me on a wait list. I was first on the wait list. I sat there for an hour and no one was not showing up for their appointments. And I thought, this is crazy. I'm just going to go to doctors on duty where they'll take you as a walk-in. Like, why am I sitting here waiting? I could be here all day. And I'm like, my ear hurts. Like, I'm really unhappy at the moment. I just want to be seen. So I go, um, two doctors on duty, get on their wait list. And that whole process took uh, like over an hour. By the time I had medication in my hands, I did have an ear infection. Uh, I got the, um, oh, what's it called? It's a big white pill. Um, amoxicillin, augmentin, same thing, I think. Um, by the time I had that in my hands, it was like, it was a three and a half hour process from the time I, that I walked into my first doctor's office. So I finally got it. I'm like six pills in at this point. And so my ears still like, I'm able to unplug it now and it doesn't hurt, but it is kind of plugged up at times, but that's the, that's why I have the congestion and the crap in my throat. So when I, um, sometimes I just got a little bit of crap in the back of my throat and I'd really like to make that really disgusting hacking sound, but that wouldn't really be appropriate for, um, my podcast or YouTube. But, um, anyways, um, there was something else. Oh yeah. I was going to say, I got my CD4 count back. Um, and I always hate talking about my CD4 count because everybody tells me this is how you can get your CD4 count to go up. Now there's no, there is no magic solution. I've talked to my doctor about this a million times. Um, and you know, it was at 84 when I was diagnosed seven years ago. I know they say like roughly 700 to 1500 is a good CD4 count or healthy or whatever. Um, but if you get over 500, that's kind of where you want to be because that shows they've done some studies that people that have a consistent CD4 that's under 500, that they won't live the longer life that they could have. So if your CD4 is over 500, and stays consistently over 500, then you are out of that possibility of like having a younger life or not living as long. Like they say it's decreased by 10 years. I don't worry about stuff like that because I don't know about these people in the study and what were their lifestyles like? What were their body types? You know, where did they have any other comorbidities? Like, did they have diabetes? Were they heavy? You know, I think about all those things. And I just don't feel like I fall into this category. I am not worried about dying early or young from my diagnosis. I am concerned about having cancer at some point and not surviving that. That is the only thing that worries me. And car accidents, like those are the things that worry me, not this HIV thing. So, but anyways, the CD4 is more just a mindset and it annoys me. So I get my, I think, okay, I'm going in and getting my blood drawn on a day that I have, um, you know, I'm not feeling good. My ears infected, like obviously my body's going to be working on this. So my CD4 should be really low. Well, no, it's the opposite, of course, because your white cell count, your white blood cell count is going to be higher because it's fighting off an infection. It's confusing because when you have AIDS, your basically the virus has annihilated your your CD4 cells, your white blood cells, and it's brought them down to a level where your immune system isn't working properly anymore. So then that's one thing. But once your virus is maintained and it's at an undetectable level, then your body gets the opportunity to increase your CD4 again. Your white blood cells can, you know, replenish. And it's taken me a long time because they did drop so low. So when they go at such a low point, it takes longer for them to get back up to a normal level. So I, in my mind, I'm thinking that, oh, if I get sick, my CD4 count or my white blood cells will go down because I'm sick, right? Because I associate it with AIDS. But that's not the case. It's the opposite. And I forgot about that. In fact, I've never, I don't think it's, I've ever really clearly thought about it that way until somebody pointed out, two people pointed it out to me today because I brought it up in my Instagram story. And they it, they, it makes so much sense. When you're sick, your body is going to have more white blood cells when you have a normal, you know, like when you don't have HIV attacking your immune system, which I don't have anymore. So what it is, is like my white blood cells obviously increased because I have an ear infection. So yes, my CD4 went up. 
which you want to believe is because it just naturally went up to its new level because it's just re it's growing and it's getting better and it's you know higher what what it went up to was like 492 last time it had been i don't know it was like 378 or something like that so it wasn't that it went up because I mean, I don't really know for sure. I mean, I don't really know why it went up. I mean, but well, I mean, I don't really know if it's because it went up naturally because it was just planning on being up. You know, it can change hourly. Honestly, that's something also. Um, but it went up more than likely because of my ear infection. So <laughs> I'm going to talk to my doctor about this on Friday and I'm sure she will agree. Yeah, it's probably because of your infection that it went up slightly because it's, you know, fighting an infection. So that's that. Um, okay, moving on. On. I um I have a fun story to tell about my my daughter told me this so she works the boardwalk and there's this ride called the fireball and it's one big giant arm that's it's massive right and off of that arm are like five claws and in each claw it can hold four people so you sit in a seat you pull down um a you know like a when, you know, whatever that thing is that comes in front of your body, you pull it down in front of you. It's like padded and it locks in on your chest, right? So you don't fly out of the ride. And then you're sitting in a seat and your legs dangle. Okay, so this thing starts to swing. It's like a pendulum. It swings, swings, and it gets lots of height and speed. And it almost goes over and swings all the way through, but it doesn't. It just comes really close to that. And there are some moments where this thing picks up incredible speed. It only it does it like a couple times during the ride. It doesn't do it with every thrust or swing, but there are like a few times if you've been on this, you know what I'm talking about where the ride just picks up this incredible speed and it's insane. I mean, you literally feel like a g-force on your body and it's a little terrifying cuz you feel like if this thing broke off, you are going to be like dust cuz this thing is going to fly you know, miles away from the park. But anyway, so they say, obviously, when you go on the ride, Joey went on the ride. That was my point. As she works at the boardwalk, her and a couple friends after they got off work, you know, you can go on rides for free when you work there. And so they sometimes decide to go on rides, which I think is adorable. I think I just love that my daughter's doing that after work. Like, hey, you want to go on some rides? Like, they get to do that. How fun. I mean, and they're in their, I think she was in her work clothes. I think they were. And, um, Obviously, when you get on the ride, you make sure that your cell phones are secure because you're going to be going basically almost upside down. Okay, so one of her coworkers, Caesar, and the other one, I think it was Braulio. Um, she'll never listen to this. It doesn't matter if I say their names. But anyways, both of them, both of them, their cell phones fell out of their pockets when they went almost upside down, went crashing down their cell phones. Two other people, Joey tells me, she goes, mom, it wasn't just them. Two other people lost their phones mid-ride. They get off the ride. This is, who even gives a shit about the phones, right? They get off the ride and a girl gets off the ride with a bloody nose. One of those phones hit her in the face. I, the thought, this whole thing is so, she is so lucky. She is so lucky. She could have been killed. Like, honestly, I mean, I'm telling you, the speed that these things pick up, I don't know, like, exactly where it hit her at what part of the ride, but literally, like, this girl could have been killed. So scary. So there is that part of it. And then, of course, my next question is, did they get their phones? So I don't know about those two other people, but her one friend, um, Caesar, said that his had dropped onto the cement below the ride. So when the ride finally stops, they lower it down to the ground and you get, hop off your little seat and you're on like a cement platform. Actually, I think there's like a grate that goes down, but maybe I'm remembering wrong. Anyways, his was on the ground. He was able to walk over and get his phone. The other one had to put in a claim because it had dropped onto a roof of a nearby store as it flew over it. Like there's a, I think it's a store that's next door. Nope, it's not a store. It's the um, roof to the Giant Dipper. That's right. It flies over like a roof that's right by the Giant Dipper. I forgot that because it's the ride right next to the Giant Dipper. And anyways, he was able to get his phone too. Apparently the one that landed on the roof um, was fine. And then Caesars that landed on the ground just had a little chip in the corner. They were fine. Like, unreal, honestly, that these phones survived this. But And I'm so sorry to hear about this girl. Like I can't believe that she got hit with one of those phones. Ter terrifying. Honestly, with all the thing I've seen, the things that I've seen on TikTok with rides, I don't really want to go on rides anymore. Like to see that things can actually go wrong and people can die on rides, like, you know, Fabio. Do you guys know who Fabio is? 
Is that his name? Fabio? I mean, he's from the like 90s, 80s, 90s. He was a like, model and um, he modeled for like all those Harlequin romance novels and stuff. And he had long hair. He's a very muscular dude. He's from Europe. Anyways, he went on a, ro on a roller coaster and he came back with a broken, bloody nose. He, he hit a seagull while he was on the roller coaster. He ran into a seagull. I mean, poor seagull. I hope the seagull was okay, but um, probably not. But it broke his nose, and he came back. <laughs> he came back into the station, and his nose is all bloody, and yeah, crazy, crazy. So yeah, I don't really have an urge to go on scary rides anymore in my life. I'm good. I'm good. I'll go on, like, you know, It's a Small World and stuff like that. Um, okay. Um, let's see. What else do I want to talk about? Oh, somebody had brought up to me that... I should recommend that people send in to me their disclosure stories, their HIV disclosure stories. Um, they, they said probably send the funny ones in. So if anybody wants to do that, I'd be more than happy to read those. Um, not a problem at all. So this person that recommended it was going to send me one, but I don't think he sent it yet. I don't think he did. Um, I'll have to check my, my spam, but I don't remember seeing anything there. Um, speaking of spam, that reminds me, my mom used to make, this has nothing to do with spam, but it has to do with food and cheap white food. Um, my mom used to make something when I was little and I thought this was like gourmet food. Little did I know it was poor white trash food, but like we ate it a lot. It's called cream tuna on toast. And I don't know how many other people ate this growing up, um, or where it originated from. I feel like it probably comes from England. I don't know why. All it is, is like a cream sauce that she would make on her own. I think it was like butter and milk and flour and then you add tuna to that so that's your cream sauce that's your tuna cream sauce and then you toast white toast and you cut that white toast in you know like diamond shapes right two halves and you line them all up all four just like you would french toast and then you pour that cream sauce across the toast and you eat it with a fork and knife. That's how I ate it. And I remember my mom would make that. She'd call it shit on a shingle. And I thought that was funny, but, um, and she knew this wasn't gourmet, but I, you know, I did as a little kid and we were, you know, my parents were divorced. They probably made it when they were married too. But when my mom and I were, uh, kind of just the two of us living together at one point, um, she would make that and I loved it. And, um, I just wondered if anybody else had ever had cream tuna on toast. It was definitely part of my, my childhood and my upbringing. Um, <laughs> probably was eating that for sure at the same condominium complex where I had that, um, game and Barbie doll destroyed by that mean boy. Um, speaking of boys, um, let's see. Oh, oh my God. So the one with the house, the one with the crazy, scary, weird, old, like, stuck in time house from the 70s um I don't want to say his name but he did reach out to me I don't know five days ago and just said hey how's it going or how's it going and I didn't respond because I feel like it was already like clear that this wasn't going anywhere like I think there was another message prior to that where I kind of had been pretty clear about that that I didn't feel I did say that I just don't feel like it's good for me to be dating at the moment with my son. And I'm sure he felt like we could still talk, but I just don't, I don't know. The second somebody writes to you that you don't really feel like talking to you, talking to it, I, and I've been on the other side of that where I wanted somebody's attention back. And it's like the person that's getting the attention that doesn't really want it. I get why people don't respond because the second you respond back, then you're letting that person know on the other end that you're fine with a conversation. And I don't know, maybe I just don't feel like having a conversation. And I also don't want to give somebody the wrong impression. And I, again, don't just didn't feel like having a conversation. So I didn't write anything. And I feel really bad about not replying. And I've had to do that before to other guys that just weren't, I don't know, getting that I wasn't into them. But I don't know, it just it's all hard. I, I, I hate dating. I really, I don't know. It's like, you kind of like, when you have a good time with somebody, I sort of have that thought in my head, like, God, when is it going to come to that point where we're not going to talk anymore? And this is all going to feel really awkward that we had this great time together. <laughs> um, that still hasn't happened for me and the coach though. I have to say we're still on a, I don't even know. Everything's still fine. I, I did see him once since this last podcast. I did see him once. And then 
the next day he asked me what I was doing that weekend. And I remember he had said that he was going to be going possibly up to ride motorcycles in Tahoe. And so I knew right away what he was asking me for. He wanted to know if I could watch his dog. I knew it. So, um, and his dog has a dog door and everything and a safe patio outside. So the dog can go out and go to the bathroom. It wasn't like I had to like be there, but I just said, yeah, I got you like no problem at all, which I thought was really nice. And he said, you know, um, that he really appreciated it and that, um, to make myself at home, you know, if I wanted to hang out there, I could, and which I thought that shows a level of trust. And I thought that was really nice. And, um, it was kind of funny because he said that, gosh, I feel like I've repeated this story. I don't even, I don't know. I don't think I've told it. God, have I, I don't know about the Texas toast. I don't know if I have, I'm going to repeat it. If I did, I'm sorry. I probably just told a lot of different people this story because I thought it was so funny. A friend of his, um, he would normally ask to watch his dog and it's just feeding the dog. It's just going in and feeding the dog. Um, the dog is pretty blind and deaf at this point. Um, and, but anyways, um, but his friend will usually recruit his wife to do it just because he gets lazy or whatever. So I guess the last time the wife was there and he says that the wife is a bit of a like nature freak, not nature, um, um, exercise freak or, um, well, I can't think of the right term, but you know, is always eating really healthy and everything. Um, and is a bit of a, as he puts it, a bit of a hater and a bit of a, um, what do you say? A negative Nancy. I guess she'd gone through his stuff. Yeah. I feel like I did talk about this. I did. I know I did. Okay. I, I, yeah, I feel like I did. Anyways, she made fun of his Texas toast and having Texas toast in his freezer. And that's why he said he didn't want to, God, I swear I didn't talk, think I talked about him before. I'm sorry. I'm so like, I totally feel like I've told this story a million times already. Anyways. Um, yeah, he doesn't want anybody like giving him shit for his Texas toast anymore. He just said he's tired of it. He goes, the jokes, the joke's getting old. And he goes, I've, I've just talked about it. You know, it comes up every time. Like I see her, he goes, I'm just over it. So that's why he asked me. But what, what was cool is he had just gotten a new sectional couch and he had his old couch out on his porch and I was looking at it. And the last day that I was going to feed the dog, I was like, you know, I wonder what he's doing with that. I'd buy it from him. So I write to him and ask him, sure enough, he's like, not doing anything with it. He said, you can take it. He's like, you can have it. So I, um, recruited Owen and we made three trips over to his place. So yes, Owen knows where he lives now. Um, and we strapped on one piece at a time on the roof of my car. It was hysterical. It's four different pieces plus an ottoman. And, um, I drove real slow the first time on the freeway with the first piece, which was ridiculous. I looked like I had a big giant Tetris piece on the top of my cross track. And my, I mean, I don't have the long cross track. I have a pretty boxy cross track. So it looked like the, the piece was almost as tall as the car was like front, front to back. I mean, it was just from, you know what I mean? From top to bottom. It was, it was a little scary driving with that on the freeway. I drove really slow and I took two exits and like, I took the Vista point exit just to drive through that to like take part instead of going on the freeway. Like I was freaking out. But the second time I drove like on some back roads and, um, the third time I was able to get a piece on top and then a piece inside. And when I took the back roads, Oh my God, this big ass snake was on this back roads. I slammed my brakes on so hard. You know, when you like lock them up, so they were locked up and my car skidded a little bit and I was so afraid to pull back because I, I mean, I would have run him over in two spots. Like he was directly from like in, in the way of two of my tires, two, both front tires, because he was big. He was really long. And, um, I would like, honestly, I was saying in my Instagram story that I would, I would need therapy if I ran a snake over. And I, I'm not even like saying that like lightly, I would have gone into like major hysteria because I love animals. I like to hurt an animal with my car or my tires makes me like, honestly, physically ill. I would get sick and I love snakes. I don't have a problem with snakes. And I feel like they're so kind of sad in a way. They're sort of like, crazy defenseless because they don't have arms and legs and just the thought of their body getting run over and their ribs getting crushed. And like the whole thing makes me sick because I can just see their whole body like coiling up and like their mouth opening and them gasping for like, air, like sickening. Like it makes me so sad. So I pull the car back. Thank God nobody was behind me. Um, and it was almost off into the brush. He, I did not run him over. And then not even a mile later, I almost ran over, uh, uh, well, I didn't almost run him over, but he was playing like, uh, like goosey with me, like Lucy goosey, like, or I don't know what the term is, but he was like about to dart out into the road. It was a squirrel or a chipmunk or something. And I was like, <laughs> like I'm pulling over close to the curb, like, dude, just 
do what you're going to do. I, I don't want to like see if this is going to work. You know, you like either go or I'll wait, like figure it out. Cause I'm not going to like try to drive, you know, whatever. So anyways, he decided to go back into the brush also. So I made it home with all the pieces. It fits perfectly in my living room. Um, and it looks amazing. Like I sent him some pictures with my son laying on the couch, said, thank you so much. It's a perfect fit. And he was like, wow, it looks great. I mean, it really does. We had like a, my mom's old couch, um, just filling up one wall where that room really needs a section all the way that my, um, family room is set up. And so it's just the perfect fit. And I'm so grateful I got it for free. I mean, it was, wow, what a steal. It's like a dark gray. And, um, he said a couple of the pieces were sort of like worn down and I don't like, I, like, dude, this couch was in fabulous condition. Like I was very, very happy to get that. So, um, like I said to my girlfriend, I said, I mean, Hey, if nothing else, I mean, I got a great steal on Tinder with a couch. I mean, she said the same thing when I told her about it. She's like, I mean, you can chalk the whole thing up, this relationship with him to a, an awesome couch. I'm like, I know really. But, um, anyways, I know I'll see him again. Uh, we chatted the other day, but didn't make plans to see each other, which is fine. I'm, um, having that time of my month anyways. So yeah, it still happens. I'm almost 53. I'm still getting that. Um, and last but not least, I will end this with, um, I met Oprah when that's just sort of a random thing, but I thought about that. Um, I met Oprah in 1992. I think if Thorley listens to this, my girlfriend Thorley, which I don't think she does, she lives in Chicago. And, um, maybe I got, I don't know if I've talked about this before or not, but, um, she took me to, Thorley took me to, um, the Oprah studio studios one day. Well, well not one day I was out there for her wedding. And so she surprised me. I mean, what a, what a nice surprise. Um, she was getting married and, um, she set this up and she surprised me and we got to go sit in the Oprah studios and I, the show was something really boring. We never made it on camera, which was a complete bummer. But at the very end of the show, cause we kept thinking, you know, we're going to make it on camera. By the way, when you're on one of those in those audiences, because I've sat in those audiences in San, Fran San Francisco also for like something called, um, I think it was People Are Talking. They tell you to clap like this. And I don't know, you can see on YouTube, I'm clapping with my hands right in front of my chest, like, like almost between your shoulders. And they want you to clap high like that and fast. And if you notice, if you watch any game shows or anything like that, they will, you'll see the audience is clapping like that. They want you to clap like a lunatic basically. Cause if you're clapping down in your lap, it just doesn't look good on TV. So yeah, you clap like this and you look kind of stupid. But anyways, um, we never made it on camera for any of that. But when the show had finished filming, um, they said that if you want to meet Oprah, you can basically get in line and they'll let you walk through and meet her. So she was, uh, you know, by the stage, but on the ground, this was back in the time. I feel like I've told this story before. This is back in the time when she had lost a lot of weight. Like she was at her thinnest and I got to, um, walk up to her. Thorley is like six one. And I'm, I was like five eleven and three quarters. I was measured the other day. I'm five eleven now. So I have shrunk a little anyways. We're very tall ladies. And Oprah was very small. Like I want to say she might be even like five, two or something. I don't know offhand how tall she is, but I felt like she was very tiny. And at that time she was very thin and very short. And it felt like we were looking down at a little munchkin and she was really nice. And she took our hands and shook her hand and she said, so nice to meet you. And I just couldn't, I don't even think I mustered anything more than thank you. I'm just like, that was it. Cause we were in a, like a single file line and you could just shake her hand and then move on and then you had to leave. So anyways, that was fun. Oh, one last thing. This is so completely, um, like has nothing to do with anything. And this is like actually really gross kind of, but I'm so curious if anyone else went through this growing up. Okay. You know, when you go number two, I told you this is really has nothing to do with what I was talking about. And when this only happened to me when I was a kid, but it happened like often. Um, and you can't sit down after like it burns and you can't actually, it's like you get that full on like uncomfortable, like almost goosebumps bumps up your back. If you sat down because your butt burns, you know what I mean? Like your butthole burns. Cause I'm not going to say, it, but my, like my kids have gone through that. Right. That never happens anymore. I can't even remember the last time that happened. It's like literally was like a kid thing. But I'm just wondering if anybody else has that or remembers that as a kid. Um, also, the gland thing. You know when your glands like hurt when you eat like lemon or whatever? I never get that anymore either. I used to get that when I was younger too a lot. 
and um, blushing. I don't blush anymore either. And I used to blush all the time, like all the way even through college. I was like a serial blusher. Oh my God, I blush so hard and I never do anymore. Um, anyways, just food for thought. Okay, you guys, I'm wrapping this up. Hope everybody's having a good week and enjoying the month of June. Happy Pride. All right, guys, love you. Thanks for listening. Bye now. Bye-bye, YouTube.